And finally, a new play that recently opened in London is taking its audience to the Russia-Chechnya battleground in a fictitious production of the Moscow Theatre Siege, In Your Hands explores the role of women in jihad and the ability of modern states to resolve hostage situations. Viewers are advised the following report contains scenes of a graphic nature. In October 2002, Chechen fighters interrupted a performance of a popular Russian musical and took control of a Moscow theater. Men, women and children were held hostage in the auditorium for 57 hours while the government debated how to control the situation. Now, at the New End Auditorium in London, theatre-goers can delve into that experience for themselves. Directors Natalia Palavine and Julian Wolford's latest stage production explores the relationship between captors and captives. It's been described as a challenging and powerful examination of contemporary moral dilemmas. I caught up with Palavine to find out why the role of women in jihad was of particular importance. Well, the Moscow theatre siege was unprecedented in many ways, um, including the fact that 20 out of 40 hostage takers were women. And before 2002, women in jihad wasn't um, uh, something that was common at all. In fact, it, from what I know from the literature I've read and the research I've done, it was non-existent um, and prohibited by, by Quran. And it was the sheer numbers of those women, um, 20 out of 40 hostage takers, many of whom were very, very young women, some in their teens, some in their 20s, uh, professional women from mo moderate Muslim families, by no means with any history of extremism, um, doctors, lawyers, and the fact that they ended up in that theater was something so shocking to me that I needed to uh, look into that, research that. Julian Wolfer's powerful staging sees the whole auditorium used, with actors seated appropriately amongst the audience. Research for a play that deals with Islamists undoubtedly poses natural difficulties, but Wolford emphasizes the production's fictitious nature. We had um, uh, specialists in on things like gun handling and those kinds of things so that we were, we were dealing with the equipment in the right way. Um, we were always very clear that this was a fictionalized take on, on, on exactly what went on. And actually it's much more about the human stories. It's very much about how, how people um, dealt with being in those kinds of situ in, in that situation for 57 hours and um, how they started to communicate with the people that were holding them um, and uh, how the ways in which the Russian government then intervened and whether or not that was a, a satisfactory conclusion to the, to the entire um, situation. The 2002 siege ended when Russian forces raided the building and killed all 42 Chechen fighters. 129 of the hostages died, but not from gunfire. Instead, their deaths were caused by an unidentified knockout gas, which Russian forces pumped into the theater through the air conditioning system. The government subsequently bore much of the blame for their deaths. Critics of the stage production say that although the experience leaves you mildly shaken, it doesn't even begin to tell the whole story behind the headlines and therefore also seems exploitative. But the producers are confident that, with the backing of the victims' families, the play isn't exploitation, but rather a reminder of the tragedy. Diamonds on the ground. This project has full support of the victims' families. When we discussed this, uh, this matter together, because they were out here in London for the opening of the play, um, they said to me that um, if somebody wants to call it exploitation, let them. And if you, if this is exploiting, then keep exploiting. As far as they're, they're concerned, we're doing the, the vital thing of bringing the, what happened in that theater back into public focus, um, which is important to them on a personal level. But also, by doing that, we possibly can prevent similar attacks, similar things happening in the future. Now be a good little mouse and pick up your shiny bits of joy. And that's all we have time for today, but don't forget you can keep up with all the week's news by logging on to our website at www.islamchannel.tv forward slash news. And on the website you can also find two of our special news programs from earlier on in the year, on the anniversary of the London bombings and the death of Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Until then, that's all from Islam Channel News. Assalamu alaikum.